<laughs> okay, so for those of you who don't know who I am, that means anyone who's going to play viola. My name is Brett Dubner, and I am the third installment of the viola teacher for this great festival. Um, today we have three victims, and they're all going to play different pieces for you, and we're going to just discuss the process, and we're going to discuss what it means to sing, whether it's with the viola or anything else, okay? Uh, so today, of course, we're going to have a Walton Viola Concerto.
And now that we're all wearing masks, at least the students are, it's so important to articulate clearly and cleanly and slowly what we're trying to say. And if you speak too fast, it just doesn't come across. And the, the thing is, when we're the ones sending the message, we know what we're trying to do because we're thinking of it. But they don't know. And so we have to slow things down a little bit so that it comes across, okay? This is even the case in the opening melody, which is very, very liquid and singing and, and beautiful. You do a great job. Um, sometimes what happens is the ends of the, the notes, especially in the upper part of the bow, they just lose contact, okay? So we really need to think about how to, to really connect our idea and not let it go in and out like you're, you know, you've got your hand on a dial or a radio and you and you gotta, uh, we don't wanna do that. And of course, we don't choose to do that. We're just not aware of it, okay? So if you try the very beginning, I wanna stop you in a couple places. And I want you to think about making sure that the line is always going. It's always going, it never stops, it never dips. If there are markings that suggest a blossom of tone, do it with the vibrato, but don't do it with dissipating the sound in your bow, okay? Open up. Okay. okay? We, we can only do so much of this 
one color before we, we have to go somewhere else, okay? Um, how about right, right there? Actually, no. I have a one before that. So you have your D. And then hold that longer. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, keep that going. Those last two, we all have to open up, right?
It's, it's like a musical highlighter pen. You can circle those things with color. Okay.
if it's the one note that's on a darker string. So how are we going to arrive to that? We have to do all we can to make the high string sound more like the lower string. So being on the left side of that note a little more. So there's a lot of a difference. You want to take one person. When you're going between the two strings, you want to always minimize the distance. Right? Always minimize. Other thing you can do is have the other note ready. Have the finger down already. That's going to actually affect the sound. It's going to connect the tone, I think, more successfully. So for and when you play the D string, be on the right hand side of that note, so it's a little brighter also. You want it all to be the same color.
We need, we need to have memory of what we just played, okay? So if you practice these passages harmonically, okay? So then you're going to temper everything to that C sharp. Your E sharp will not be high, it will be tempered, okay? Try one more time right there. Good 
to find a way to solve a technical problem using a musical solution. Okay? I think we should end here. You sound amazing. Keep working slowly and keep singing. Okay?
really much I mean, okay? So when you played the very opening, it was beautiful because you're all by yourself. But then when you're playing with the orchestra, you really need to focus on making sure you haven't curled in your arms, okay? So can you try right after the, um, the Chris Patata section? Um, okay, and at this place, you're with the orchestra, okay? okay. Yeah. And I want you to think just about making sure your bow arm doesn't curl. You don't bend your wrist, but that you keep the, the hair on the string the whole time. Whether you're at the frog or you're at the tip. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just keep it flat the whole time, okay? about how notes connect. The music goes blah, 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 but you're going blah. So what's happening is you're going You're just spewing oh, like, a, like a, 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 a lawn spring. You're just, just the, the bow needs to be controlled. We want to make a crescendo or connect to the E flat. We have to use more bow for the, the note beforehand. But if you do this, it's dim. Even if you don't want to. So what we have to do is be much more aware of how much bow we're using for each note. That's how we'll make a, a, a natural growing to the next note. So Making the crescendo, not the bow. We don't want to squeeze. Uh, 
So as I've been saying to some of the students, think of your, your right arm as being longer than your left arm. You're not holding a stick. This is just another joint in your arm. You've got a joint here, joint here, joint here, and that's the end of your hand. Which is why it's really helpful to practice without your bow. It's great for apartments because no one can hear you. But to actually pretend you're holding a bow, it's really great. <laughs> it's really helpful, you know? Because then everything is naturally balanced. Your arm is going to always be on the right string. It's only when we then add the bow that we start doing this business and then all these problems happen, okay? So now with the bow, How do 
get that note? How to get it? You know, it's not hard if you think about what the note's name is. It's just it's the C sharp, right? So. Okay. So right there again, the, the 
natural. I would 
go to that G.
Sure. This is a challenging piece. You did it beautifully. Um, I would love to, to see you play bigger. It, it all almost like a miniature of what I know you want to say. Okay. Yeah. And, and part of it is, I know it's a continuing theme, it seems, um, the bow hold. Mm -hmm. Whenever you start going down, your pinky literally starts saying, hello, oh, hello, oh, 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 yeah. right? And, and that means that you're pressing because you're not holding the bow. You're, the fingers that are not doing this are pressing. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're going to get sound. Instead, you should hold the bow with all four fingers equally and float. Not that, okay? So when you're playing your, your opening, can you just play it the way you want to do it musically, phrasing everything? But I want you to focus on one new thing. Don't take your pinky off the bow. If I was behind you and you pull up a finger, I would not want to be able to. Okay. I want to be glued to your bow, mm -hmm. okay? Sure. 
that was great. You just added you know, twice the most volume in one without working. Mm -hmm. Okay? Good. Kind of blah, 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 blah,
and then float more, as opposed to holding your bow very lightly and pressing and using very little bow. That's when we get this. And I want you to go in. Totally different sound. The second one is softer up close, but louder out there. Okay, so this is the press one.